Hello, I thought it might be interesting to do a video sort of on a theoretical, if you had a 28 days later style sort of zombie outbreak uh, with the fast zombies, but that they can be killed, you know, without destroying the brain. You can simply stab them or whatever. Um, what would be a good loadout for it and what would I do personally? So what I've got on now is what I think would be a good loadout for it. Uh, I don't have steel toe cap boots on because I'm in the house, but otherwise I'd be wearing steel toe cap boots, sort of like workwear type ones. So obviously right helmet on my head, major one, um, obviously stops you being bitten or scratched on the head. And main thing is that you can put the face shield down to protect your face and if you've uh, not seen the films or haven't seen them too recently you might have forgotten that in that the sort of zombies in it projectile sort of vomit all over people all the time which infects them. So by having a face shield, put that down, fluids can't hit you in the face. Around my neck I have a respirator. I don't think it really matters too much on there because it's not actual for chemical, you know, weapon use. It's simply, I'd say, you'd want a respirator that if you're going into an area because everybody's dead, you know, you don't know what's gone on with chemicals and that inside, you might want a respirator on. Also, if there's like the smell of rotting corpses and things like that, um, you might want a respirator on to help protect you from the smell, which is, I think, something lots of sort of these uh, post-apocalypse films kind of forget is that if lots of people have died there's probably going to be a lot of rotting corpses everywhere with a horrible horrible smell so you might want a respirator just so you can't smell it and things like that so what I've actually got on is I've got combat trousers on lower down but in here I've got um, a British Army DPM raincoat, the Gore-Tex type and then inside the raincoat, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, probably isn't I have got, can you see that? I've got my Kevlar vest on underneath and the reason for that is simply that what I want to do obviously is have um, rainproofs on because that stops infected blood and saliva and everything getting through to you because it's waterproof and then underneath the Kevlar because that helps prevent you from being scratched and things like that. Now I'd also imagine it'd be quite hard to bite and scratch through one of these easily at least if you're resisting it's not like you know you're in a short sleeve or something like that. Um, motorcycle jackets would probably be really good but a bit bulky but you know it's to prevent people from actually scratching and biting their way through it now for melee weapons I've got my cold steel gladius simply because as said the infected in 28 days later um, are vulnerable just as a normal human would be so if you stab them they die really easily um, you know they're not meant to be super you know zombies that can take being shot over and over and over again um, it's just that they're fast and you know surprise people that's why they're dangerous and they can spread the infection very easily so obviously having um, a stabbing thing machete is fast to swing around as well in a confined space um, and obviously with this sort of gear on you could tank up in a corner if you had to and thrust with it quite easily with the face shield down you can't get splattered with any bodily fluids um, obviously I do have a riot shield uh, that would be the sort of thing that I might have in a stationary position but you wouldn't really want to be carrying a big riot shield around with you all the time as you walk around if you had a smaller one I think that could be really useful to sort of be able to use as a small shield with sword, but you know that sort of thing. The infected in 28 days later aren't shown as being particularly smart either. Um, they, I guess, they have that animalistic sort of cunning, but they can't really seem to work out. You know, like people hiding behind mirrors and stuff like that. So it'd probably be quite easy if you had sort of a good infantry-style setup, almost like modern medieval warfare setup to be able to tank behind something, you know, and repeatedly stab around the shield because they probably just keep trying to attack the shield not get around it. So, that's what my main loadout would be. Obviously, one of the other important things I'd have, which is in a pocket which isn't too easy to get to, which is a bit of a problem if you're doing a loadout like this, is a flashlight, simply because, obviously, you want to be able to check if you're in a dark area what's going on. So, I probably actually have a couple on me, to be honest, but this is the zoomable one. Um, so it means that obviously I could check things close and far away and obviously what I'd want to do is have the thing in it that lets me have AAA batteries in a post apocalypse and then once I have the AAA batteries I'd just probably loot a load of them, carry around in the rucksack so I could always have you know light in the torch but as I was saying I'd probably actually have a couple of little small ones on me at all times in a sort of nightmare scenario like that because you obviously don't want your torch to fail or get knocked or something and stop working so I think that's the main thing with loadout, so what would I actually do to survive? Well, I think by the time you know what's going on, you have to be obviously really careful, because I think the reason everybody really gets infected in that film is nobody really knows what's going on to start with, they all think it's rioting and stuff like that. So, um, 
I guess you've got kind of the... Um, in reality, if you had something like that going on, you know zombie movies exist. Because one of the things I always notice in zombie movies is something like, except for something like Shaun the Dead, is nobody actually knows what zombies are. You know, it's like no other zombie movies exist, so they have to, you know, think, well, what are these things? Whereas in, um, you know, like something like Twenty Eight Days Later, obviously people don't know what the infection is. But I think if it happened in real life and you kind of had those sort of films for reference, you'd know more what you should do and shouldn't do. Um, you know, compared to uh, like a lot of characters in the things that make dumb mistakes. So that's my sort of basic idea would be to hold up unless your area actually gets contaminated, then you just load up as many supplies as possible into your car, avoid sort of really busy main roads, um, and then find a really rural location. The infected in it don't seem to be very good at actually hunting people down in rural areas, unless, you know, lots of people in a village or something got infected. I mean, I, that changes, doesn't it, in 28 weeks later, but 28 weeks later isn't a very good film, so um, I think 28 Days is the one you should use more as a reference, because it was, you know, 28 weeks was done by totally different people, they just got the rights to do it. Um, so yeah, I think really what you'd want to do is go to a rural as possible place, like they actually do at the end of the first one, um, because obviously if you're in a really rural area, the zombies, you know, have to walk and run around, um, and it says as well that they don't really like to go out during the day. I think they can do, but it's like they'd rather not. So what you'd probably want to do as well is sort of travel during the day and make sure you're all sort of um, shacked up and, you know, secured at night. Um, so what you obviously do is during the day, do most of your travelling, find very sort of rural out the way areas to sort of hide away. Um, and then, you know, during the... Um, night you're obviously hiding away during the day you're trying to get to further away and then making sure that by the time it's getting dark you find a really good secure out the way area so that's what I'd say I'd probably do and then obviously what you would do eventually is find somewhere like they do in the film or whatever the lake district or somewhere really remote I suppose if you're in somewhere like America that would be even easier um, and then you just secure that place and then within a few weeks the infected have all died of starvation uh, in the film, they don't actually eat people, they just bite them and scratch them to infect them. But that's the reason the infected die off, is because they don't eat each other or, you know, other humans. They just simply sort of keep going. So in reality, they'd probably die much faster from dehydration and starvation than they do in the film. You know, not like eight weeks later, like I think it is in the film. Um, after, you know, first infection, it would probably be within a week or two, I'd imagine, if there's not constantly the infection spreading. But there you go. That's what I'd do. I'd wear stuff that stops you being easily bitten and splash your fluids. I'd have a mask in case I needed it for whatever reason. Flashlight so you can see in the dark. Something like a machete that you can stab and slash with. Maybe a little riot shield if I could get one. But the main thing would be just to try and get away from urban areas so you're secure as possible that way. And also you don't want to be too weighed down. With all this equipment on I could still run fairly quickly and not you know, be worn out really quickly. It's not like I'm wearing a big plate carrier or anything. Um, but that's obviously something you want to be aware of, you don't, because they're running infected, they're not like zombies where you can just risk walk away from them, you'd have to be able to run if you were going to get absolutely swarmed. But yeah, that's what I'd do in a 28 days later kind of um, scenario. I'd have all this sort of stuff and um, try and get as far away from everybody else as possible.